Hey, this is Richard with Automate Everything. So for the first video for my channel, I'm going to try to replace my stock OEM head unit with an Android Auto head unit running on a Raspberry Pi. So I went ahead and I bought all the parts on Amazon that I think that I need. So we're going to go through those parts and take a look and see where we go from there. So hopefully I can remove my stock head unit and replace it with this DIY head unit and use it as my daily driver. Let's see where we go. So we'll start with the parts. All right, so here's all the parts I'm going to need for this project, at least I think I'm gonna need, laid out on a table. So starting with this, this is the power supply. This is going to take 12 volts from my battery and step it down to five volts, which is the power input that the Raspberry Pi uses. So uh, I'll connect a battery to this part of it and then just take a regular USB cable and plug that into here. So I don't need to really do anything fancy. Now there's gonna be a little bit more to it than that, uh, I'll get into that part of it later, but for now, that's really the basics of it. 12 volts to 5 volts, powering that thing. This is going to be a sound card that I'm just going to plug into the USB of this thing, and really all I need that for is to get the microphone output. So I have a microphone that's already ran in my car because I've already installed an aftermarket head unit in my car once before. So because of that, uh, I really just have to plug this in connect the microphone that's already sitting there and I should be good to go so I can use voice inputs for uh, Google Now and things like that. So here's the Android display. And uh, this is the, the aftermarket seven inch display that's made specifically for the Raspberry Pi. It has its own special connector ribbon cable that'll just go straight directly into the Raspberry Pi, which is here. And that'll go in there. Now, one interesting thing that I have is I actually bought this when I installed my aftermarket hand unit previously. So this is kind of the double DIN display unit for my car specifically. So this is gonna make my car look mostly stock. So that's hopefully gonna make this project look nice and clean. Cause like I said, I'm gonna take my existing head unit out and I'm gonna replace it with this. So it slides in there really nice. And I like the way it looks on top like this. Now I can also mount it behind. I'm not sure which is gonna look better. I'm gonna experiment with both and see which looks better, but that's it. Now here we have a harness, a wiring harness. Now this wiring harness goes directly into the stock wiring harness of my car. And with this, I won't have to cut any wires. Now I bought this on Crutchfield and you can get this online for relatively cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. This is something that's pretty essential because you don't really wanna cut your stock wiring, right? So you plug this in then you can cut all these wires off and take what you need and not worry about having to disturb your stock wiring. So here is a USB-C cable. That's gonna to connect to my phone because my phone uses USB-C. And what this is, again, this is Android Auto, so it's gonna emulate my phone screen. That's really all it's doing. So in order to get the phone screen on there, I gotta connect it via USB. So this is the cable for that. And this is about a 10 footer, so it's just gonna go from my head unit to my center console so it's you know nice and clean. So what else do we have here? We've got what this will eventually be. It's an extender cable so I can use my backup camera because I do want to have a backup camera in there. I consider that an essential. If I can't get the backup camera to work the way I want it, this thing is going to be a bust. So I definitely need to make that work. Here's my actual camera. And again, it uses these little ribbon cables. These are cables that are meant for the actual uh, stock connector for the Raspberry Pi. So I can actually plug these directly into the Raspberry Pi and it doesn't use like an HDMI or anything like that. It has kind of its own little connection there. So that's, that's pretty much it for parts. So the next step in this evolution is to install the software. So the software I'm gonna put on there is called Crankshaft. And that Crankshaft runs Android Auto. And it, like I said, it's an emulator of Android Auto. And it also has the Raspbian OS on there. So I'm gonna be able to literally just flash this micro SD card with crankshaft on there and it should give me the software I need to get started. Now another thing I didn't really mention about this Pi since I didn't really talk about the Pi itself but I've also got this little hat on here and this is going to give me the ability to connect to my DSP. So I already have an amplifier, a DSP, kind of a high-end audio system built in my car that I installed myself. So I don't have to worry about this thing actually being an amplifier or dealing with audio so much as literally just taking the sound and passing it digitally to my DSP. So this hat is gonna allow me to do that. Okay guys, so I'm gonna show you what wiring I've done so far before I button this thing up and do my first test. Now this is all just kind of temporary now, but let's see if it works. 
So this is that wiring harness I was showing you that I bought online. And as you can see, I tapped into this. This is the accessory wire. This is gonna turn on when my car turns on. It's not gonna be constantly giving it 12 volts. It'll only give it 12 volts when the car turns on. This is ground. This is my USB cable that's gonna to go to my phone. So I actually ran that along the console here and comes through there like that. So I did that. That actually was a lot easier than I thought. So if luckily that went pretty well. Next is this right here is the microphone in. So the microphone goes along my A pillar and it comes up here. Uh, this is where the old one went. So I went ahead, took that one out, and actually runs in this overhead. I'm obviously going to not leave this hanging like this, so I'll put that back here in a second. And this is the old one. So that is my OEM. It includes noise canceling and all that good stuff. So hopefully this one sounds okay. We'll see how it goes. So the other thing I have here, so that's audio in. This is audio out. So this is going to be the audio that's going to my amplifier. This is temporary. Now, this is going to be using just kind of analog out. I don't want to use analog, I want to use digital out using the Hi-Fi Berry because my DSP supports digital in. So, but for now I'm going to take this out because in case I have to troubleshoot anything, I don't want to have to deal with this because I think that's going to be a little bit of extra work to get to work. So this should be easy, hopefully, to work with just a standard analog output. So. That's pretty much it. Those are my connections. This is my display. It's got the Raspberry Pi mounted on it with the USB sound card because that's what I'm going to use to get started. And that's it, man. That's It really doesn't take much to get started with this. So I'm going to go ahead and button this thing up. Obviously, I'm not going to leave this on here with this electrical tape. I'm absolutely going to solder and heat shrink that when it's ready to get permanent. But this is not going to be the permanent wiring configuring issue configuration anyway and as I said I can get to that later but for the test this should do just fine okay now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fire this thing up so I've already fired it up once or twice it's definitely got some quirks that I need to work out obviously the screen is not in place yet I haven't you know permanently mounted it yet but for now again this is just testing and obviously I've got some other parts here that are laying here that's the old old head unit and this is the part that goes here but uh, I'm not worried about putting that in yet because like I said we're all testing here so I'll go ahead and fire it up just so you can see how this thing looks um, it was actually when I installed the OS it literally just worked I didn't have to do anything extra so that's the first issue so you can see that was a little lightning bolt uh, the other issue here here there's noise so uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure why it's so noisy, but again, I'm using analog and I'm going to switch that to digital when I get the chance. So that's it. It took about two, three seconds to boot up. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect my phone. So let me go ahead and do that. And uh, when I connect my phone, it should uh, pop up here in a second. There it goes. So there it is. So now it's just, it has some kind of random stuff up there. So I think that's Google Now information. So if I play music, it works. And it actually sounds pretty damn good, but again, that's because I have a system. So I control volume through my DSP, so I can control volume through this. So I see. And then if I go here, it actually shows what's playing. This was just some random thing that popped up. I can, I should be able to change that. Uh, so. so, music works, sounds good, despite the noise that I'm hearing, which again, I think is probably alternator line, because I ran my wire temporarily and it's pretty ghetto, so I'll, I'll fix that. But. Here's the other quirks. So music works, that's great. I try to play, I try to call somebody. That's my wife right here. Tells me Bluetooth is not connected. I didn't think I needed Bluetooth. I figured it would get Bluetooth directly through the phone and it would just kind of mirror the screen and then it would call and then I'd hear it and it would work just fine. But it looks like I, I guess this thing needs Bluetooth. So I'll have to get a Bluetooth module in there. Uh, here's the other problem. The first time I chose the navigation button, it gave me a choice between Waze and Google Maps. I prefer Waze. 
So I chose Waze, and now every time I go here, I just get a black screen. So I think it's trying to launch Waze and something is not right. So for whatever reason, that is not working either. So there it is, first pass. I've still got some issues to work out. I gotta fix the navigation. I gotta get Bluetooth so I can make phone calls. That's a pretty critical feature. And then obviously I, I said that if I can't get the backup camera working, this thing is a bust and I still feel that way. The backup camera to me is very important and essential. So I need to make sure I get that working. I haven't even started on that. So that's gonna be my uh, my next big project. So, and then I've got the noise. Um, and again, I think that's probably alternator wine. If I fix it using the digital Hi-Fi Plus connection, I think that'll take care of the noise issue. And um, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I would have to say for a first pass, it's doing really well, considering that it took me probably a little bit, of, about an hour to set everything up. And that's running the wires. That's getting everything kind of temporarily connected. and. Like I said, I, I, I connected it, I fired it up, and it just worked. I didn't have to tinker with Linux. I didn't have to do anything. So Crankshaft is awesome. It works really great out of the box. So big thumbs up on that one. So um, that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to sign off. And um, for my next video, I'm going to work on getting all this stuff cleaned up. I'm, I'm going to try to make this look you know, like a better connection. But I have to say, I really like the way that looks. I think that that is definite win as well. I think that that is a great replacement for the stock head unit. It doesn't look stock, but I still think it looks really clean. It doesn't look ghetto rigged. Um, so good stuff there.